All right, guys, thank you and welcome. Welcome to Building Blocks for your boards. And we're really excited that you guys chose to come in and sit and chat with us. And we imagine that most of you here are probably board members at, at the least. Uh, if anybody who sits on a board at home, could they raise their hand? Awesome. And yay. And um, how many of you are a fill a leadership role on your board, like board chair or vice chair? All right, awesome. And then how many EDs do we have in here? Staff people. Yay. Okay, good. This is wonderful. You know, because we really want to encourage you this to be a discussion, just a very casual discussion amongst peers, amongst people that are kind of all very interested in how to move their board to the next level. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So it's, it's a very casual session for us. We want to encourage you to raise your hand at any time and ask questions and, and participate in this discussion. Um, and it'll be great. So my name is Angie Kinney. And I'm happy to be here. I have two daughters with cystic fibrosis. One is 23 and one is 19. Um, and they're doing well. And um, I am on my board in Western Pennsylvania. And I also chair the volunteer engagement committee for the Leadership Council, as we were talking about in the last session. Um, and we have been sort of charged with the, with the idea of working on this project of um, coming up with some structure for our chapters to help them build their boards. Um, so today we hope that you go home with a few simple wishes, which that, that you could go home kind of understanding our new board structure, being able to talk about it, being ready to identify potential candidates, you know, for that next level of your board development, and being ready to work in conjunction with your, your EDs to do this. And I can't stress that enough because this is a partnership. You know, I was just thinking about it, like my ED's sitting right there, Pat, say hi. Oh. <laughs> and we're working together on building our board, and I can't imagine what that would be like if I didn't have an executive director that was all in about it. And then I thought about it the other way too, you know, thinking about a, an executive director without a volunteer leader who's really helping them, you know, push this through and make this a priority in your chapter. So it's very much a partnership, and that's another takeaway we want you to leave with. Um, our, our volunteer leadership um, council and the, and the volunteer engagement committee um, have been really excited to work on this project. Um, we made sense to us that the first thing we needed to do is develop some structure and, and some tools to express that structure and send that out to the chapters. So we worked on that all last year. We did a lot of research. We talked to other um, organizations and kind of talked a little bit about how they, how they manage their board of directors at, at, a, at a local level, at a chapter level. And we learned a lot. And we learned a lot about best practices. And then we started polling our own chapters and getting some feedback. Um, and then it's been a really wonderful partnership between our committee, um, which is almost everyone on our committee uh, is, a, is a board chair, which is wonderful, and the wonderful staff members that we have. Um, it, it makes it really a nice combination. I wanted to ask anybody who's on the volunteer engagement committee maybe just to stand up so we can, so everybody can see who it is that's been working on all this. So we tried to kind of spread everybody out so that there's, there's at least one of our committee members at every table so that when we get into a table discussion, we have somebody to kind of host your table and facilitate. So our wonderful panelists will be kind of moving down and, and, and filling in as well to help the tables that don't have a committee member right now. So just to give you a little history on our, our committee and, and some of the things that we've been able to accomplish, um, with the board structure, we actually developed a system to help chapters really understand the, the specifics down to term limits and things that are very necessary, especially when you're trying to attract the outer circle of people and trying to paint very clear expectations um, when you are recruiting someone to join a board of directors. Uh, we put together 
a structure that we thought made a lot of sense and we modeled it after our own leadership council here nationally. Um, so for instance, volunteer engagement chair, that's the position I serve on the national council. So we would like every local chapter to also have a volunteer engagement chair. So, you know, we did the same thing with our, our outreach, individual giving, fundraising, and it's important to note here that everyone, every chapter is at a different stage. We've, we've got a, you know, a handful of chapters that don't have a board or are just starting to build their boards. Maybe they just have a chair identified, which is awesome. It's a start. We have lots of chapters that are have boards in place, but maybe not as active or as organized as they'd like. And then we have some really advanced chapters who, you know, have worked really hard to keep it together and are just interested in learning more best practices. Um, so not every one of these positions is a position that you might fill in your chapter. It's really based on, you know, your where you find yourself in the development process and, you know, the 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 top you know, five are the most important, and then you can reach out and kind of add more as, as you develop. So um, we're excited about that structure. This is the most in piece, important piece of our, our new structure. Um, we rolled it out. We talked about it last year at VLC. At the ED meeting in September, we rolled it out officially to the chapters. And then all fall long, we've been having, you know, uh, workshops and, and webinars for the chapters to start learning a little bit more from other chapters, some of the best practices and, and things that are working for people as they work to figure this out and figure out what this structure means in your own chapter. So we've been very excited about that. And at this point, you know, we've grown and helped chapters develop that we know that almost every chapter at least has a chapter board at this point, which is a big deal because we had a lot just hanging out there, just, you know, not even at that point yet. We are developing more materials, um, which we'll talk about, you know, before we leave here today. We're pretty excited about helping the chapters move forward in recruitment um, and retention and engagement, you know, so that's really exciting. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, the panelists here, and these are also wonderful women that sit on our, our volunteer engagement committee, and we've asked them to just kind of join us and introduce who they are and what their connection is, and just kind of share with us, you know, where you are in your chapter board development and kind of what you've done and what you've taken from these last few months of development and where you see it headed. Katrina, would you like to kind of kick it off? Sure. Um, I'm Katrina Young. I have a 19-year-old son with CF, and I am currently the board chair of the San Diego chapter. And I imagine my board is very similar to all of yours. Uh, we have set, we're diamonds in the rough. We have a lot of potential, but we have a lot of work to do in order to get us to where we really want to be to work effectively. So um, our biggest advantage is that on our board, I was sitting on this committee, so I understood this rollout, and my ED understood the rollout. So me, my biggest um, action item with my board was to make sure they understood the whole rollout and why we were doing this. I'm a mom, I have three teenagers, so I hear why all the time. I know it's an important question to answer. So everything from why do I have to go to school to why are we changing this board, it's important to get back to the basics because it's important for everyone to have ownership over why we're doing this. Um, so in a few weeks before our first board meeting, before we rolled out everything, I forwarded my board members a list of all the job descriptions. And I told them that these documents um, we're, um, we're a part of an initiative that was going to strengthen the volunteer engagement out outreach. Um, but then I went one step further and I truly addressed the purpose, the why, of why we're doing this. I told them that providing a definitive job description, expectations for the board members, as well as an overarching structure for each individual board, the CF Foundation hopes to create a stronger sense of unity and ownership for all its volunteers, everything from long-term, very committed board members, all the way to brand new members of our family. So again, because I'm a mom and I understand that, that taking on responsibility, people get leery of that, they worry it's going to be more work, um, I softened out our rollout. So instead of um, immediately signing out um, chair positions with all those different positions that I rolled out, we assigned them as, as teammates. So what we did is we paired, um, we, our hope was to pair 
each board member within a committee with a staff member and that they would I explained that they would be working together so kind of like the overarching theme of this whole conference is no man left behind we are all good at work together we're stronger together so that's kind of how we rolled it out that that no one was gonna be working harder or or you know faster that they were just gonna be working stronger and together so um, um, I told them that I wanted them to look over the board descriptions and to identify where they saw themselves because it's important for them where they saw themselves in terms of these new positions. Like, do they see themselves in fundraising? Do they see themselves in tomorrow's leaders? Where did they see themselves? And I had a good idea of where I thought they were going to be just based on past history and past um, um, conversations I had with them. And then um, I reiterated that this was not their sole responsibility. Again, that, you know, the no man left behind, we're in this together. I reiterated that there's another leg to this rollout and that we were going to be starting a nomination committee and that they would be adding new faces and new ideas and new resources to our board and that we would be working together harder, stronger, faster together. Um, and the, the most sincere why piece that I sent to them was at the very end of my email that I sent to them right before our board meeting. And basically I said, um, I said this, I said, I think it goes without saying that this new step is further proof that the CM, CF Foundation's commitment to find a cure for all individuals with this disease in the most efficient and expedited manner possible. Please know that your time and talents are greatly valued and I know they will continue to serve our mission as we work forward together. So I wanted them to know that, that, that the, that the true buy-in to this, that, that, that we're a team, and that if we start together as a team of leaders, that's going to trickle down to all our committees, to all our volunteers, to all the people that hope to engage within our community. So we have to start at the top, get that really strong, and then, and then everything will kind of fall into place. And in my opinion, it worked. Our, our rollout went really smooth. Um, we right away, um, the very first person I turned to and asked where she saw herself on the board, she saw herself as part of Tomorrow's Leaders, and she said, I'm really excited about engaging with Tomorrow's Leaders, but I don't have the connections. And right then and there, someone from our board popped up and he said, oh, I have the connections, but I really don't have the time to do the outreach. And I said, perfect, because in my mind, I'd already pair them together. So they pair themselves together, and they're now teammates, and they're working harder, stronger, faster together. And our, the rest of our board meeting went like that. And we're, we're, not, we're still building and we're still growing and we're still not perfect, but we have the pieces in place. And I, I hope to think it's a little bit because we went back and we explained the why behind it. And I think it's also the fact that I went back to the basics of our, our mission of our foundation is that we are stronger together and that we can work harder, faster, stronger, and that we will get there as long as we do it together. So, um, so hopefully we will continue to do this, and I'm grateful for all the work that we're doing because I think it's working. Did anybody have any questions for Katrina about that process? You know, I think it, one of the important points that she brought up was that, you know, it is a process, you know, and it is steps, and you're filling in pieces, you know, that's what's important to know. Um, that you, you don't have to feel like you're behind on any of this. Wherever you feel like you are in your board development is where you are. It's all about figuring out next steps and what we can do next and starting to fill, you know, the pieces of this puzzle together and as a team developing it from there. Do we have a question in the back? Okay, okay really so the question was, how many board members did they start with? How many did they end up with? And did they lose any through the process? That's a really good question. Um, we start out with seven. We're still at seven. Um, we, so we still want to grow. That's our biggest point right now is that we need to, we would like to basically double our size. Um, we almost did lose someone, um, and, but I think that the idea of the teammates, before I started talking about the teammates, we saw someone kind of waffling and he had a conversation with a staff member that he was a little nervous and um, the, the teammates really made him feel that I'm not, they're not asking me to do more because, you know, some people, this was a businessman on our board, he's doing it out of the kindness of his heart, he doesn't have personal connection. So I, I think in his mind was like, oh, I'm giving all I can, I don't know if I can give much more. But then when he realized he was going to be working with someone else, he realized he wasn't going to be doing more, he was just going to be working as part of a team and with a, with a specific title. So hopefully that helped keep it. So knock on wood, we're still seven strong and we hope to grow. 
So I can add to that, you know, in Western Pennsylvania, we, we decided that it made sense for us is to really, and again, this is part of the tools that we've developed um, as a committee and as a team at the foundation and distributed to the, to our chapters to, you know, an evaluation tool to kind of help you evaluate the members that are on your board, you know, and help you identify what, what, um, where those holes are and things that you need to fill. So what we decided to do was take our existing board who have been board members absolutely forever. Um, as we developed a small nomination committee, we decided to charge them with having peer-to-peer -peer discussions. We gave each one of our four members on the nomination committee um, three or four board members to talk to. And we had them all call and, and schedule a phone conversation and peer-to-peer -peer just talk about the new board structure, where we're headed, how did you feel? Are you, are you in a position where you think maybe it's time for you to roll off the board? We know that you're committed no matter what in all the different ways that people are committed. Um, would you like to stay on and kind of enter this new structure and start a two-year term or a three-year term? And um, where's your head? And either way, do you have any thoughts for us on nomination? And talk to them about our priorities of who we're looking for to build that board. And that worked beautifully. And Pat, would you say maybe half of our board or so um, decided to um, roll off? Yes. Yeah. Really important people to us have done amazing things and will continue to do amazing things, but they found themselves in a position where they weren't really making board meetings anymore. They'd been doing it for a decade and they were just ready to, to move on and make space for somebody else. So it's worked out really well. The people that stayed on, we had them sign a commitment form. Um, and we're starting the process over, so that has worked really well. Yeah. Who would like to go next? Oh, we had another question? Of course. Sure. Um, I will talk I to Molly yes about how I will best distribute those. Yeah. Okay. Or come find me after the meeting. Sure. Yeah, I can, I can forward the emails I have for sure. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Ever. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. First of all, everyone on our board's already has come into our circle of our board because they were already very engaged. And they all have their pet projects and their pet events and they're 100% still involved. And that was part of the peer-to-peer -peer discussion. You know, if you, if you think that maybe you're, you'd like a break from the board level involvement, you know, where do you see yourself being? Where do you want to kind of dedicate your CF time? And have them really take on the responsibility of succession and who they think, you know, might be, you know, well suited to replace them. And we felt good about it because we, we never asked anybody to roll off. We thought, we're starting a new structure. We're inviting our whole board to stay on. We just want to have these conversations. What feels good to you? What feels right to you? And they made their own decisions. You know, you know, I really, I haven't, I know, I haven't been as active and I have, you know, and of course they still continue to do what they're doing. Um, so it's been really healthy, very healthy, good conversations. I would say we've had zero loss. Opportunities. There's new focus for the CF Foundation, so it's a great time. 
Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that was also part of our conversation, and we gave a little agenda for these for these conversations to take place. But if you do choose to stay on the board, do you see yourself more as a generalist? Is that where you're comfortable, or would you like to maybe step up on some of these positions and we can discuss it more? And we didn't put that responsibility in the hands of the nomination person. We just said that we would then follow the foundation would follow up and we discuss this a little more. So in some cases, we are targeting some of our long term board members for some of these these you know, uh, leadership positions. And in other cases, it's helping us decide who we want to recruit on the board mm -hmm. you know, for these specific reasons. So it's been really healthy. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, personally, I think it's very healthy because, you know, I think we'll always have that piece of it that are directly connected and they bring the passion to what we do. And they're also generally, you know, energetic or connected or, you know, really great resources. But I think in the bigger term, the whole reason we're developing this structure is to be able to track the outer circle because it's all about what this really means in the end. You know, if, we, if we're attracting the outer circle and attracting new blood and new leadership into our organization, that's just gonna snowball with the connections through the event line, through our initiatives, through individual giving, and on and on, and it's gonna have a ripple effect through the years. It's huge. So, you know, I, I think we should be strategic about who we recruit to be on the board, but I think varied is very healthy. Would you agree, Molly? Yes. And I think that uh, Serena is a great example of that. Perfect segue. Yeah, Serena, <laughs> steer, share a little bit of your story. Oh, okay. I'm Serene Rogers, and I am with the Tulsa chapter of the Sooner chapter. I'm currently serving as board president, and talking amongst everybody here, I'm kind of a happy medium between all of the stages of the board. So. Um, I don't personally have a connection with CF. Um, I was volunteering four score and seven years ago at a CF event, and the bid for the Cure speaker um, was a little girl, and she absolutely stole my heart, and I was hook, line, and sinker, and I've been all in ever since. So, um, thank you. <laughs> She actually passed away about five years ago, and she extended, lived 10 years past her life expectancy from the day that I met her. So seeing the evolution has been so promising. It's how can you walk away from something when you're so close to finishing something you started so long ago. So that's where my passion comes from. Um, the Tulsa board it has been in existence for 30 plus years. We have a lot of um, different members, and they are all so dedicated in every aspect from having connections to being part of it for 25 plus years that they give year after year in every aspect from um, donations to volunteering to advocacy. So we're really in a position where they're active. We're doing a good thing. We're you know a million dollar board. 10, 15 years plus running. So we're sitting in a really good position. So what we're doing and what my goal was when I um, became board chair was to bridge the age gap between this board that had been active for 30 years with the Tulsa New Leaders Board. And so how do we bridge that in between? And this is a perfect step and it's exactly what we're going to implement for all of our new board members that come in. We will utilize this structure so as the legacy board, senior board, advisory board, we have a bunch of different names for each other, um, phases out, we will be 100% in compliance with this new structure, and then as that structure ages, then comes our new, from um, the Tulsa New Leaders Board. Amazing. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, Tulsa. So there you go. So, you know, in the interest of time, I think we're just going to move uh, right into our last two panelists to make sure that we get to hear their stories before we kind of break up into some, some individual discussion. Cool. So, thanks. Hey, everybody. I'm Brittany Link. I am from the Charlotte chapter. Very happy to be here, um, like you. I don't have a tie to cystic fibrosis. I actually moved to Charlotte, didn't know anyone, Googled, what's the best 
charity in Charlotte. And literally, cystic fibrosis popped up. And it's, it's, it's very romantic, actually. So I, I showed up. And I, I think what's important for us as we think about volunteer engagement and board engagement is not necessarily asking people what their connection is, but giving people a connection, giving people a reason to want to be involved, giving people a reason to stay involved. So when you talk about your board members that roll off, you know, one of the things that we're really focusing on is you know, if they don't have a direct tie to CF, let's give them a reason, let's make them want to stay. So I actually um, just joined our board last fall. I actually am in the volunteer engagement role there. So we rolled out our new structure as well and I'm very happy about the focus on volunteer and, and board engagement. Our board was also, like yours, um, very strong in my opinion. We had term limits, all of those types of things that are rolling out in this new structure. Uh, we had 10 members previous to the structure and now we are focused on moving to around 13. And I think what this new structure is really going to do for us is not only help us with a, a pipeline for bridging the gap um, with tomorrow's leaders and some of our other finest programming that we have in Charlotte, um, but also building out that uh, long-term committee type structure. So maybe somebody's not necessarily interested in serving in one of those leadership roles, but how can we pipeline them into that type of role through their involvement in the committee or getting in touch with that board member and working with them on, on these new initiatives. So I think initially we can all be change averse and we see these things coming through and it can be scary, um, but for us it's only opened up a bigger uh, pipeline and bigger opportunity for us to grow as a board and really sh serve not only the Charlotte community but the, the whole national CF community. So. Thank you so much, Brittany. Jenny, what's been your experience so far? So first off, I'm Jenny Bulak. I'm from the Cincinnati chapter. I'm a parent of a 13-year-old girl who has CF. And um, I want to say we are the extreme opposite of these three for our chapter. <laughs> we had a board um, that was long time existing, and it basically consisted of our board members were chairs of a fundraising event. So strategically, that wasn't working for us because our board meetings were financial report outs. And that's really not our long-term goal. That, you know, that's fine if your only focus is fundraising, but you can see from the new structure, we have many other avenues that are important to get us to the cure. Fundraising is probably still very high on the list, but it's not the only key in our longevity. So in December of 2016, we started priming our existing board members that changes were coming. We weren't going to meet for a while. There was going to be a new structure rolled out from the uh, corporate CF foundation, and we were going to work towards that. And we informed people, sometimes individually, sometimes in small groups, that we were going to be finding the best fit for them in our organization, and it may or may not be on the board. Now, we, we had people that um, were on our board that wanted a resume builder. So they weren't necessarily as committed as we needed them to be. Or we had uh, some people who had been on there a long time and were just grown tired of the process. They were really good at maybe being a committee member in the new structure, but not necessarily the chair of one of the uh, aisleways in the org structure. So we didn't meet for almost all of 2017. Uh, but once the new structure came out, we started an interview process. I mean, just like you would at a company. Uh, we started listing prospects um, with the CF staff and, so, and some of the previous board members, getting ideas of who might fit where. And as we found um, a couple of prospects, um, we did really conduct phone interviews and explain to them the commitment needed, and we did have a commitment form. And um, th that was based on really making them sign into what we were doing. Uh, um, to date, we have um, four members. We have a um, fundraising chair. We have what I would bet is probably one of the prime examples of tomorrow's leader chair. Um, they have a very strong functioning committee. They have professional development uh, scheduled for the entire year already. The committee meets regularly. They're reaching out. I mean, the, this, this to me is one of the best things we have going for the Cincinnati chapter. The um, fundraising chair um, is committed, um, but the follow-through is not there, so we're having some conversations of how we get that back on track. 
and then we have strong prospects for um, individual giving and volunteer engagement. So we, we had a board, but it was not serving the end goal of funding a cure and the advocacy and the other aspects. Awesome. And again, Jenny, it's a process, right? It is a process. It's a process. And one thing I will say, um, we had a long discussion about, uh, especially with those that have built the structure, do you have a board meeting if you only have three people on your board? And our answer was yes, because you don't wait till every spot is filled, because it is a process and there is going to be turnover, and you continue down that path. Even if you're only having a one on one conversation, with a board member, you continue to make the steps to the right direction. Okay. If you ask somebody to be on the board and you don't have a meeting for eight months, you've basically asked them to do nothing. Right. So that's our story. Right. Excellent. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate it. I appreciate so much just hearing a little bit about your experiences and where it is, and hopefully you're getting the feel that, you know, everybody starts in a different place, but we're all just trying to progress. Progress is, the, is, is what we're shooting for. Um, if you have any questions, just make a note of them so that you don't forget. And we will, we want to make sure that you get some discussion time in. And then um, we will kind of round back, hopefully, with a little time for Q&A at the end. So what we'd like to do is have you as a group at your table just kind of have this discussion. What, what, what do you feel the board status is at your particular chapter? You know, wherever that may be, because there's, there's no wrong answers. What challenges have you faced if you've started to try to implement some of this new structure? What are some of the successes? You know, where do you see it going? Where do you hope to go? Um, and then what we'd like to do, and it's just a short discussion, 10 minutes, and then we will round back and ask each table to pick maybe two really cool things you'd like to share with the group, ideas, insights, questions, whatever that might be. Um, but what I'd like to do, again, for the interest of time, Noreen, if you could take you and your two friends there to the table behind you. Anybody else who's just two, move on up to a table where there's extra seats. Um, again, we want to make sure we have a table host at every table. And um, we'll just take a little discussion time. If you are joining us from home, we would very much like you to be thinking through these questions as well. And you are so welcome to send in your comments, your questions, again, your challenges and successes. And we'd appreciate hearing about that. Hey, guys, excuse me just a minute. I wanted to give you a heads up that we're going to kind of start the discussion in about two minutes. I know it's not much time to talk, and we could all talk about this stuff forever. But if you could just take a little time now to decide what are the couple of things you'd like to share or ask as a table. And um, when, we, when we start back up, we'll walk around with the microphone and, and have you share. Thanks. OK, guys, thanks so much for taking that time to have that conversation. I want to um, point your attention to um, our wonderful staff leaders for the volunteer engagement um, committee. And it would be Molly over here from the national office. She keeps us organized and on track and on point with our purpose and our mission. And we have Eileen in the back, who's been wonderful part of our team. So they are going to be our Vannas and walk around with the microphone and um, give everyone an opportunity to kind of share what's happening. What's, what are you talking about at your tables? Molly, you want to start out? Hi. So our, we had one topic that came up that we liked, which was what is the role of board members versus staff at ED in terms of executing some of the things that are talked about, decided, you know, thought of, and that's one of our struggles right now. Is is what does the board do once they have an idea, and how much does the staff have to take on to execute that idea? Yeah, that's a great question, actually, and it's one of the things that we discovered as we did our research that it's it the in the former board structure it was very independent depending on chapter. You know, some chapters the um, staff, for instance, were very involved in the meetings. You know, like we do that in Western Pennsylvania. They're there, they hear everything, and um, everything's a partnership in our, our chapter. But there are other chapters that really felt like, no, they had good reasons to keep it kind of separated. And, um, you know, my personal feelings is that it is a partnership, and that as much as 
you know, we can combine the better. Um, but I do think it's going to it's going to determine be determined by who it is that you have on your board, who it is that you have in your chapter leadership, and what that mix is. Um, and again, it's a development process, you know. And I think it's also important to note that some of these great um, this is a great a great question. Uh, we will take take these questions back and try to build out um, uh, training training um, on these topics. So what you're doing here today um, will inform future training um, on board development for our um, colleagues in the field. So thank you for that great question and, and you know, look look for more on that. Yeah, and we are actually working on like a frequently asked questions. You know, as we get concerns and feedback. We figure other people have the same, so we're really developing some really, you know, pointed discussion and, and solutions. So that's wonderful. Where are we going next, Eileen? Who, I think who's we're report out for this one. The guy with his hand out. Thank you, guys. My hand is always out. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thank you. Uh, just a brief summary: our the 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 status of the boards represented at this table are range from one to two point five. I believe that's a real designation, not something that's made up. I will take better word. The challenges that the, as a whole that we're, we're, we're facing are how do we reorient our, our, our vision and how do we focus the energies of the board um, relative to the new positions and the, and the new responsibilities. Um, some of the challenges uh, that, are, that the boards are facing are the, the concept of term limits where you've got uh, folks that have been there forever and there's reluctance to either give up their seat um, or just reluctance in terms of bringing new people on board and how that transitions. Uh, some of the steps we d discussed in terms of how, to, how, you, how you can counter some of that, um, uh, Mark with the New York chapter, uh, they had created an advisory council because a significant number of the board leadership was all rolling off in mass and so in developing this advisory council that allowed them to provide some guidance and some support and um, so that the new board members didn't feel as if they were working without a net, so to speak. So that gave some confidence that the, the new people coming on would, would, would be able to transition uh, without, uh, with some assistance and guidance from the, from the older generation. Um, that would help the, the transitioning of the boards, uh, that would overcome some of the reluctance. Uh, and then the question was raised uh, before time ran out was how do we use staff, the, the new boards that are being developed. Uh, and again, uh, Mark uh, suggested that uh, targeting uh, the key industries and then the leaders in that uh, industry and then going after um, specific people to cultivate those relationships. And I think that's all we had time for. That's ex excellent points. And I love that point too, Mark. You know, that's what we're getting to. We're, ta we're, we're getting to the point where we can actually start talking about who should we recruit? What are our targets? What's our strategy? Where are we going with it? Because there are a lot of different directions to go. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Kathy. Hello. Uh, we talked about a couple different scenarios, different levels of maturity in the boards. Um, one theme, though, was on ownership. Um, and specifically, uh, one example was someone uh, was a chair of a fundraising uh, committee, and they, it, that seemed like a really heavy load, and they weren't sure they'd be able to fulfill all the responsibilities. Um, and we actually talked about Katrina's point that teammate or that collaboration uh, theme was really valuable and they may take that back to their board uh, to to look at maybe ways to offset some of the, the heavy load of that chair. Um, Kristen from California also had uh, an example about boundaries really and how far that they um, how far she can go between board members and the executive director slash foundation um, uh, employees um, in terms of what really needs to get done and how it needs to get done, not duplicating efforts. And so we talked about that communication is really key between the executive director, the board president, um, to define maybe roles and responsibilities so you're not stepping on others' toes and um, you're not duplicating efforts. Yeah, so again, it's back, back to partnership. Yes. Okay, we have a couple of good questions. Um, one of the comments I'd like to share, though, is that don't expect to um, have every position filled right away. You may have to do some, some research and some digging to find the right person for that. So you should, you should take your time. Don't feel that you have to give each of the existing members a position. Uh, one of the questions was, um, what's the f what does the fundraising chair mean? What are the responsibilities? 
And what type of flexibility does the board have with it? Um, That's an excellent question, and it's, it's kind of leading into, you know, our, our next stage of development in this process where we do work to start, you know, defining that a little bit more. And, you know, I think it's important for the, all chapters to realize that they have a lot of flexibility under this structure. So it is structure, but you need to make it work for what your priorities are in your chapter. And you need to be part of that process of design, defining what those roles are going to be. My vision would be, you know, as we have those roles determined on a national level too, and we're given our priority projects to work on, that information can be fed down through the channels and out to the chapters. So if individual giving decides that their priority is to have every chapter have a, you know, a, a, a donor match by a certain date, you know, our, we can feed that out to all the individual giving chairs across the country, you know, to be working mm -hmm. with their EDs mm -hmm. to develop that, you know. So, so as we move together as an organization, we will be defining these roles more and more. Um, but you also need to feel like as a chapter level that you can do what's best for, for your organization as well. And we have a question over here. No. Thank you, John. Um, okay, I represent the Rocky Mountain chapter. Um, and I thought one of the questions that came up um, after we kind of got into it was, what does the board do? Um, and so I think that that is an interesting question. And, and my ED right here um, had a great response in that um, there's a variety of things we get to do, and that is help with the strategy um, and help direct the strategy, um, that we provide a voice for the feedback. Um, and, and we're a sounding board to make sure that we um, are, are on the right track. And really it also helps us with making those connections for the outer circle. And so while I think we probably um, are attracted to boards for different reasons, um, I think it's really defining what your board is supposed to do and what you want your board to do um, is, is also as, as important as, as the function of each of those board members. Um, and then we also got into the discussion around term limits and, and thinking about our aging board. Um, you know, I would hate to see 50% of them leave, um, but uh, knowing that we need to bring in some new blood and, and some fresh things. So we had some good discussion about the term limits. So I actually think that's a brilliant question. It should be the number one question. Our frequently asked questions would be, what does a board do? <laughs> I think that would be awesome, you know, because we define it and we list responsibilities, but to actually come up with a paragraph, you know, that makes sense and, you know, consolidate it into an answer would be really cool. I want to take a second just to, because it's so important, just to talk about the, the term limit thing and make sure that everyone understands um, the term limits are important because we're organizing ourselves to attract the outer circle and the bigger picture for our boards, but it is not in any way um, designed to sort of alienate or kick out people that have been on, you know, for a long time. And I think that um, it's also important to, to know that if you, if, you know, it's just giving us a timer, um, give it, you know, you can actually let your board members know that, you know, whatever, whatever your term limits are, two years or three years, those are renewable. You roll over for another two or three years, you know, before you would step off and give someone else a chance and some leadership. And also, if you signed up for one of those leadership roles, those are exempt from those roles. So as an ED, if you've got key people, you just don't want them to roll off. You don't want them to go anywhere and they're doing a great job. You have them in one of those key positions. They don't have to go anywhere um, for a certain amount of time. So yeah, so in anyway, let's move on to the next table and make sure everybody has a chance. Yeah, I think that ties into really what the title of this um, is, which is Building Blocks. And uh, we had various chapters represented that are various places in their evolution. We had Wisconsin, Middle Tennessee, Oregon, Charlotte, Indiana, and Maryland. And even though we're all in different places in terms of our um, development and our journey, I think the commonalities are, A, we've got a lot of people that are occupying seats that aren't necessarily doing what we need them to do. Uh, we would like to, them to be along with us, but we, we need to find other places for them to be where they can be recognized for what they're doing. And it's also finding the right people, the building blocks, but, but who are the right building blocks? I mean, it's people who are doers, but we also need people in our communities that people who write big checks will say, wow, I want to write a big check because I want to be next to her, or I want to be next to him. I mean, that's the reality of it, so. 
Yeah. Okay. So our, oh, our table, um, we kind of came up with more of an observation versus a question. And I think probably similar to your conversations, everyone seems to have similar but very different issues. That There's an overarching theme, but we have different ways that it's presenting to ourselves. So our thought was, is there a way to have more of this to form some kind of mentorship um, program or to have some kind of social media close conversation where so you know someone who needs to maybe fine tune their board a little bit can talk to someone else who's done it or is doing it and they can talk to each other and someone who needs to build their board can find a mentor to help them so I think that was our more of a suggestion versus a question. Well, I love that suggestion, and I think that is where we're headed. The whole purpose of doing this and kind of unifying the country and the chapters is that we can develop these communication channels, whether that be through closed Facebook groups or um, you know individual webinars that include our our volunteer leadership, and that's very important. And we're going to be talking about that a lot more and how how we can play that out because that's the whole thing, right? We're in this together. That's what it's all about. Did any table not get a chance to speak? Molly, you want to say something? No, I, I wanted to um, just give you a prompt because I'm sure you're going to do this in your closing, but to let this group know what's coming next for um, from the from the board development perspective. Yeah, that's great. So, and we've talked a little bit about this as as we move forward, but we really look forward to fine tuning a lot of what we're working on and get really into more talking about in full engagement from our boards, right? Because that's what this is all about. The only reason we're going to put the work into this is that we believe that this could really make a difference in the bottom line in our chapters through our event lines through individual giving, through any initiative that becomes important to us, that this is going to roll out. You know, we like to say that, you know, it's it's easy to count how many seeds are in an apple, but you never know how many apples are in every seed. And this work that you're committing to do at your chapter level is so important because it's not just about the people you're selecting. It's about the people they will bring into the organization and how it moves forward in succession. And you know, again, this is volunteer engagement, right? This is about making people feel wonderful about what they do. To your point about making sure people feel thanked, and it's a wonderful opportunity to do this. Our peer calls were a great opportunity to thank people. Pat and I are planning on um, the people that decided they're kind of ready to roll off. Oh, we're going to have plaques for them. We're going to make a big deal about them at the next meeting. You know, we may have them mentoring, you know, new, new members. You know, they're going to feel even more wonderful than they did before about their involvement. So it's all about perspective and growth. And we've got some new materials coming out. We have new, yes. Yeah, we are not alienating anybody. We're not cutting anybody off. Anybody that cares about this mission and wants to step at a leadership position, there will always be one available to them. It's just a matter of fine-tuning where they are and about making it work and making sure that you're expressing to them how much gratitude there is. And, um, and there's so many ways to do that, and we're always open to talking about that as well. We do have new materials coming that we're really excited about. We've actually developed a board manual um, which is really great, and it's and um, we're just in a final process of it getting it approved through the communications department and whatnot at National before we can roll it out to the chapters. We're talking a lot about the onboarding process, whether it's existing board members kind of being reoriented or whether it's our new ones. Um, we're actually developing you know, some slides for an official orientation that's sort of based after off of the board. We have so many fun things coming that are going to hopefully make this easier and easier. So I think what we're, what, you know, where you are now is where you are. It's about taking those steps to what feels right about the next move, what feels right for your chapter and your particular chapter's needs. And it's about being committed 
as an ED and being committed as the volunteer leader to really work on this and come up with some goals. You know, what, where do you want to be next year at this time? When we're all back together, what do you want to be able to say about your board? What's better about your board in one year than it is now? And how do you get there and break down those steps? And that's our ask of you. That's the challenge of you is to really commit to going home and deciding I know that these are the next steps we can take. Here's when we're going to do it. Here's how we're going to do it. And work together um, as a team, staff and volunteers, to make it happen. And I'm really excited to see where we go with that, you know, and, and, and talk about success stories and see how that starts playing out in our chapters and, you know, because we're in this together. And thank you so much for your interest. We're heading into break time. We know this is a very important discussion, so we want to let everybody know it is break time. And feel free to, to move on and, and um, get ready for the big session. But if you want to stay behind and continue this conversation or ask some questions, we are here and we're not going anywhere through break, so we, we'd love to talk about it.